As Ali Kamal feared, the nationalists soon targeted him in their increasingly violent crackdown on those who opposed them. But it was to be world events that sorted things out for Ali Kamal. In 1914, the nationalist government took Turkey into World War I on the German side and lost disastrously. They were forced to resign, and British and French allied troops occupied Istanbul. The allies backed a new government, and in an extraordinary turn of events, Ali Kemal was invited to be Minister for the Interior. Convinced Turkey's best interests lay in cooperating with the Allies, he took the job. The tables had turned. Now Ali Kemal had real political power. So this is the Sublime Port? This is the Sublime this Port. Sub sublime or what? Fantastic. And where we're going now is the room sublime, where isn't the cabinet meetings would have been held. Right. Hey, superb. This is the business. It's not bad. Now, if I was Home Secretary in the Ottoman Empire or Interior Minister, or whatever, I want to have a crackdown. I mean, there's no point in being Interior Minister without having a crackdown. So, what's he going to do? He can crack down on aggressive beggars or, or panhandlers or squeegee merchants or something. What's, he, what's, 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 his, what's his big initiative? Well, as it turned out, well, what, can you, what, what do you crack down on? Ali Kamal Bey had a, a, a major cracked down on his hands, and that was the attempt to suppress the emerging nationalist resistance movement over which they had increasingly less control. Despite their defeat in the war, some key nationalists remained in positions of power. Chief among them was Mustafa Kemal, later known as Ataturk. At the time, Ataturk was a senior officer in the Ottoman army, a war hero and respected leader. He should have been taking his orders from the Allied-backed government in Istanbul, but in fact, he was actively organizing nationalist resistance to the foreign occupation of Turkey. As interior minister, desperate to avoid a new war, Ali Kemal acted to try and stop him. Boris's great-grandfather was about to take on the man who would one day become the president of the republic, the most famous man in modern Turkish history. Ataturk is still deeply revered throughout the country today. And this is where it really gets dicey for Ali Kemal and his political story. Yeah, you got some bad news for me here, have you been? Well, actually, I'm going to let someone else give you the bad news, because uh, although uh, we've had some problems finding a Turkish historian who would speak about the Ali Kemal issue uh, on camera, uh, you mean the, they, the they, later they periods, didn't want to talk about it? That's right. Why not? Because it's still controversial here in Turkey. But one eminent Turkish historian, Dr. Ahmet Kuyas, has agreed to talk to Boris about an infamous government order known as a circular that Ali Kemal issued sacking Mustafa Kemal, Ataturk, from the Ottoman army. So here we have uh, the circular by the uh, Minister Ali of the Kemal. Interior, Ali Kemal. It's dated June 23rd. Your great-grandfather sends this circular to all the governors saying that Mustafa Kemal is fired, you don't have to listen to his orders. Uh, he's uh, uh, not acting on behalf of the Ottoman government. Right. This sounds like a serious political yeah. mistake. He took on Ataturk, who is to become the father of modern Turkey, and whose face adorns every uh, lamppost and municipal dog pound in <laughs> Turkey. Quite right. O official historiography in Turkey uh, calls Ali Kemal together with the Sultan, traitors. Is uh, it not possible that he just had the interests of Turkey at heart? Of course. He I mean, just, maybe he thought, look, this, this guy's trouble. Well, All he wants to do is take on the French and, and the Brits. Yeah. He's going to cause us no end of bother. Well, All he was advocating was, a, was, a, was diplomacy. Yeah. Uh, you know, trying to do the best for his country. didn't want another war. Mm. It was simply that he was no. a loser in the political struggle. No, that's another matter. Following this notorious circular, Ali Kemal was forced to resign from the government. His political career over, he returned to journalism, writing pieces against the nationalists' war of resistance he was sure would lead Turkey to ruin. It wasn't so much a political blunder at the end of his career, it was the natural conclusion of his opposition to the nationalists. And the more I dig into this, the more I think about it, the more respectable I think the case for Ali Kemal really is. And what he's saying is, we've had all these wars, what good does it do? And that's why he distrusted the nationalists. Modern Turkey, of course, it's a wonderful place, we, 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 all, we all love it to bits, but because they've created a kind of secular religion out of Ataturk, and they've got this ruler cult, 
it's become necessary symmetrically to demonize those who can be said to have opposed Ataturk. And I think if you look at what Ali Kamal was actually saying and doing and the values he really stood for, I think that's unfair. Fair or not, Ali Kamal was a marked man. In 1922, the nationalists led by Ataturk claimed victory and regained control over most of Turkey. One of their first moves was to go after those who had dared to criticize them. Ali Kemal was top of the list. Boris has never known the details of what happened next. But now his cousin Sinan has uncovered an astonishing account written by a junior officer who was present at Ali Kemal's interrogation and witnessed the events that followed. The prosecutor asked him directly the reason why he um, was against the national movement. And Ali Kamal answered, I never believed uh, in the success of the movement. Uh, and I was convinced that in the case of failure, the fatherland would be totally ruined. Which has been uh, his line throughout. He's always, this is what he's Absolutely. always said. When the interrogation was over, the local commander told me to gather crowd of 100 people outside. Sometime later, Ali Kemal left the building. The crowd sat on him, stoned him. Several people even stabbed him. He fell on the ground, blood pouring out of his head and his face. When uh, Ali Kemal died, the crowd sat on his body, stealing whatever valuable he had on him his gold watch, his ring, and even uh, his trousers. And then the body, the dead body, was hung on a tree. Is that it? That's it. Oh, Jesus. 